Welcome back to day two of the Nestle Professional live stream at the National Restaurant Association Show 2023. I am your host, Brittany Borer, coming to you from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm from the Food Institute. And we at the Food Institute are so excited to be partnering with Nestle Professional to bring this live stream to you today. So over the next couple of days, you're going to be over the next couple of hours, really. I mean, the show has been so long, it feels like days. <laughs> There's so much to see. But over the next um, hour or so, I'm going to take you through the booth. You're going to see inside what's going on at Nestle. You're going to hear from some key leaders at Nestle as well and even get in on a cooking demo and beverage demos as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us both in person and online. If you're joining us online, Give us a like, a subscribe, thumbs up, whatever platform you're on. Also, drop your comments and your questions. We'd love to interact with you throughout the show. I already see we have one comment. Hi, Anne-Marie from South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us today. So without further ado, let's take a tour of this fabulous Nestle booth. This was put together by event, coordinate, event manager Katie Andrish, and she just did a phenomenal job. So over here, we have our cooking station. This is where our chefs are going to be. Uh, dishing up these delicacies throughout the rest of the day. So we've got your Nestle products. We have Chef Mate products. We have Miners. We have Sweet Earth as well. And our chefs are doing a great job just dishing that up. We saw the Stouffer's White Cheddar Mac and Cheese being showcased yesterday. And that's back out in action again today. And we're seeing the Miners drizzles. They're being tasted right now. And they are just savory. They are an easy easy to use product and we also have chef mates corned beef hash being plated up as well so that's some of the exciting stuff we have going on on the food side i want to turn now to the production side of things so we're going to look at the back of the booth this is where we have our food institute nestle professional setup for the live stream so as you can see behind me there are cameras there are lights um, the Food Institute CEO and managing partner, Brian Choi, he's getting set up with uh, guests for an interview. And we're going to wrap around real quick right now, my friends, and take a look at the beverage station. So we've got uh, Coffee Mate products, Nest Cafe, and they even have a new vitamin enhanced water that has come out. And that is very delicious, very light, flavorful. And uh, guests can come to the booth and enjoy coffee, custom-made coffee, tailor-made to order. And that's what customers are really craving right now is that tailor-made coffee down to the down to the milk, down to the creamer, the sugar, whatever they want is totally customizable, every flavor. So without further ado, I'm going to kick things over to Brian Choi and see who he has with him today, our first interview of the day. Brian? Well, Brittany, thank you so much for that awesome tour. We are here day two here at the Nestle Professional booth, 9609. If you haven't come here, come here today. Uh, just a lot of great products, both food and beverages. I have a great guest right now, Philip uh, Philippe uh, Breitenbucher, VP of Beverages at Nestle Professional. Welcome to the show, Philippe. Thank you so much, Brian. It's great to be here. Awesome. Well, let's get straight to it. Philippe, you've worked in both food service and retail. Uh, and so what are you seeing in terms of the beverage category at large today? Yeah, so on, on beverages, just in general, um, it's really that uh, help people to lift up their, their daily, uh, you know, their daily, daily activities. And uh, especially in this uh, you know, continued macro environments uh, of some uncertainty, some challenges. So beverage is a great platform to create experiences that are memorable, that are unique. Um, second, it's uh, really the, through the pandemic, it's really driven a lot of um, sophistication in the category, on, particularly on specialty beverages, uh, to bring out of home experiences in home. Um, so people have really upped up their game, and with that, the expect expectations of what to uh, um, you know, look for uh, when it comes to out of home. And last but not least, it's all about what's good for you and good for the planet. So what are some of these healthier, more functional options and obviously of the sustainability aspect around the whole category? Awesome, uh, well, great answers. And we all obviously know that the consumer has evolved tremendously over the past 24, even 36 months. Um, and so what are you seeing, seeing in terms of the way consumers are 
drinking out, you know, out, out, of the, uh, out of home and also how they're drinking out of home. Yeah, so in out of home, it's really about having the experience the way they want it, when they want it and uh, anywhere they want it. So that's really, uh, again, uh, upped up the game uh, in terms of the expectation, but also on how operators have to address that. So it's all about uh, obviously non-compromising the quality of what we're delivering, but it's also then enabling their personalization that they expect in their beverage, how they want it, where they want it. Um, and then uh, last but not least, it's also innovation, right? They want to be surprised, enchanted. Um, the, the pace of innovation through that sophistication I was uh, mentioning you already earlier has really increased. So, and that's what we're experiencing actually also here at this show, right? The innovation is now again back on the table, right? We need to reinvent the cat. Category, uh, so that's for both operators, and then for us uh, to provide the solutions to them. Yeah, that's great, you know. And uh, you know, as I walk around the booth and try the products, and you know, from the coffee to the refreshers, there's so much innovation that Nestle Professional, you, what you guys have been doing in the industry. So let's talk a little bit more about the innovation on specific categories, whether. It's coffee, whether it's. Just quickly, yeah. So in Coffee Navy, sorry, um, we really bring our coffee uh, mate and Nescafe professional coffee solutions uh, uh, together, which is uh, par excellence. The, the, the two the coffee brands we have in the portfolio to drive a customized experience to operators and to their consumers. And then obviously cold is the new hot, right? That is, as you know, uh, in the coffee shop environment, um, two, more than two thirds of coffee consumption right now. And we're bringing this to our two operators to uh, offer this um, cold experience, customized cold experience in several uh, food service settings, whether it's in the surf environment or the self-surf environment. So. A lot of our equipment solutions speak to that. Tied to this, obviously, coffee made the perfect uh, flavor agents to enhance the, the, um, the coffee experience, whether it's flavoring, uh, ripening, or uh, sweetening. Uh, and then a big, big rock for us in the coffee category is plant-based with our coffee made um, plant-based varieties, uh, oats and uh, almond milk creamers. So big, big push into that category as we see that more than 20% in the dairy space is now plant-based. And then another innovation that space is our uh, oat milk uh, uh, creamer and our Nescafe Barista platform. On the cold beverage side, it's all about the refreshment, right? We heard a lot of the players there, uh, refreshment and our refresher platform is speaking to that, how we bring uh, refreshing uh, um, options to water or carbonated soft drinks in a turnkey solution uh, to our operators and to their consumers and uh, tied to that with a functional benefit, whether it's an enhanced water or refresher where we have uh, green coffee extract to have energy uh, boosting proper properties to that beverages. Those are the key drivers on how we transform our portfolio and help our operators innovate their cold beverage menus. No, oh, that's excellent. I love the, re the, the refresher category. Is the drive towards that type of product more because consumers are interested in the, you know, in health, you know, coming out of COVID? What's really driving that sort of refresh refresher category from where you sit? Yeah, it's really about uh, in that cold beverage space, it's a lot about you know, the mixology, uh, combining flavor experience, texture, ingredients, ideally also ingredients, functional ingredients that bring intrinsic properties to uh, to the end beverage, uh, like green coffee extract is a great example, but also some of the other uh, enhanced water that we, where we actually add vitamins and minerals to give a functional option to a very large category right. uh, like uh, like the water category so there's customization of flavor texture and of course an, uh, an intrinsic uh, functional benefit, a benefit to that great and on the cat coffee category one of the things i've noticed is that you know also out of home so how you know how is messy you guys dominate both sides of the market uh, from a food service strategy perspective, like what's it, what's the differentiator in terms of like the way you guys look at both consumption of coffee? Actually, we complement uh, very much so. You know, a lot of the uh, in-home uh, 
revolution, innovation uh, we bring out of home, but we also transfer us in out of home that we then transmit into in home. We the big the, the, the two big rocks um, that that I was um, that I already alluded to is on ice, uh, cold uh, cold coffee in particular. That is really the new hot in the category. So in both spaces, we are bringing a lot of applications and innovation to drive that cold coffee consumption. And then plant based is a big big rock as well uh, that we see. Uh, the great growth in uh, actually in in home first where we had a, the first inroad um, now coming out of the pandemic that becomes also a big big trend as well and we see it everywhere we see it uh, sparked in the coffee shop space but now also in our on demand turnkey solution in other food service executions whether it's serve or self serve so those are really trends that are emerged in out of home but also really accelerated in home and uh, we at Nestle professional include those in our platforms to uh, to capture new uh, new locations right one of the things i found really interesting you know walking through that coffee the coffee aisles is that the machines they do it all yes right so cappuccino espresso americano and so if you're a food service operator and you don't want to you don't have the capital to hire like 10 different re says you have one machine is great the taste is great and so you guys are offering that solution to food service operators giving them an opportunity to save on the bottom line so talk to us a little bit about that sort of uh reality and the strategy of, of providing any extra value to food service operators that's why we call our solution nescafe barista right like you it's uh, <laughs> you it's uh, you uh, with our solutions you basically have a barista at the touch of the button uh, we provide a turnkey solution with the equipment that's the starting point um, the service around this to really have a um, have a comprehensive uh, support program for any operator with minimal touch requirements in a low or even no labor environment. And then our great ingredient platforms, our Nescafe ingredients, to tailor a customized coffee menu, both hot and iced, to any operational setup. So that's really what we bring to the table, a turnkey solution at a push of a button and so you to create a coffee shop style experience right. and last but least, sure what what was the most exciting product or technology that you experienced today yeah uh, you know at the show yeah really uh, around um you know robotics is really speaking about that uh, you know the no or low labor environment really the the, the level of automation that you can see to continuously elevate the game in uh, crafted core cold and uh, hot beverages. Uh, that is a trend that will see uh, great, great innovation in the very near future. Awesome. Well, Philippe Brighton Booker, VP of Beverages at Nessie Professional. Thanks for a great uh, interview. We're going to turn it over now to Brittany Bohr, who was who in front of a couple of great guests. So Brittany, take it away. Thanks so much, Brian. So I have two very special guests with me. I have Perry Miele, you are the president and CEO of Nestle Professional, and Dora Marquez, you are the director of brand marketing for Nescafe and Coffee Mate. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Yes, thank you. Good morning. And uh, really proud to be here. Very proud to have our booth here at the National Restaurant Association 2023. Um, and what you'll see today is all our great brands, our great solutions that we have for you, the operator. And uh, there's another uh, proudness that comes in me as being uh, the executive board member of the National Restaurant Association and be able to be here and support our industry and our operators. Wow, that's great. So, I mean, how do you feel being here at the show? You've, you've got your hands in it, you're here, you're on the floor. Um, what's been the reaction from guests so far about the booth and everything going on? Great question. First, I'll start. It gives me goosebumps um, because I was an operator before joining Nestle years ago. And again, very proud to be here to be able to bring the solutions back to our operators based on what their need states are. And what we're doing here today is showing off our great solutions and innovation that you, our operators, are looking for, whether it's from our beverage solutions, our refreshers, right down to our food products from our stofers and chef mates and, and so forth. And then you'll see here Nescafe and Coffee Mate, and again, our Vitality refreshers that are being able to dispense in any manner that you have in your operation. Wow, that's fantastic. And they taste fantastic, by the way. So I want to ask you, Perry, what is, how would you describe the state of the food service industry right now? Well, if you asked me uh, last year, I would answer you differently. What I'm going to answer you this time 
is that you can see it right here at the National Restaurant Association uh, 2023. You're seeing an influx of uh, people visiting, seeing what's available for their operations because we're not in a recovery. We are coming back and we are back. Now is how do we operate in this new environment? But having said that, it's all going to be about how can we help you, the operator, drive traffic in anything that you're doing, whether you're a full-size, uh, full-service restaurant, quick, quick casual, QSR, just grab and go, catering. We have everything that you need to help you, not only with our solutions, but also with our expertise of our team members to help you through that. And so tell me a little bit about what your chefs are doing here at the show. Well, right now, simultaneously on the other side, we have Chef uh, Matt Jordan really doing uh, basically a viewing of how to use ingredients, how to use speed scratch, and how to deliver fast, quality, consistent, food safe products and um, items that goes on your menu with great brands that can help that with that quality and consistency that you need. Yeah, easing that kitchen uh, workload has definitely been top of mind, I believe, for a lot of operators out there. So, Perry, if you could pick one thing about this setup here today, the booth that is probably your favorite or you're most excited about, what would it be? For the booth? At the booth? Well, the way we're set up, you'll see what you'll see here in a second is everything that we have that's required for you and your operations from a beverage solution standpoint, whether it's hot and cold, with great brands that our consumers love from a, from a consumer standpoint. And then on the other side, we also have a full kitchen showing you how to operate with a kitchenless kitchen to a kitchen kitchen, a regular kitchen, and then also a kitchen that where you have a full brigade, but also a kitchen that is able to do speed scratch, uh, you know, for limited people within that space. You can go on and on. I can tell you're very passionate about this. Um, so final question for you, Perry. How would you describe the culture and the DNA of Nestle Professional? Well, the culture and DNA, it's all about people. Um, and it's all about uh, also people that really understand the industry and understand not only the industry, but understand what our customer need states are. And why we have a very strong team, I always say we have the best team in the, in the industry. Why do we have that? Because they're from the industry. And why is that DNA so strong? Is because they're from the industry, but the most important thing is their passion of wanting to give back to what they would want to receive from us from a partner and that's what we do and i think you can see when you go around and speak to everyone here when you come and visit us at our booth you'll see everyone that's with us has been in the business and now being able to really articulate your need states and deliver to what your needs are so um you know that's a strong dna well that's excellent perry miele the president and CEO of Nestle Professional, thank you so much. We're gonna turn now and speak with Dora Marquez about coffee. And I actually, I'm gonna scooch back here because I just wanna be so close to this coffee. It smells so good. I love coffee. And for those of you who love coffee as well, you're gonna to wanna to check out this sweet treat that we have brewing up over here. So Dora, we talked about food brands yesterday. We're talking about beverage brands today. Um, what are you seeing in the world of beverages right now? The world of beverages is changing. We know that in every one operator mind, the biggest challenge is labor. And we have outstanding low labor solutions that deliver cold and hot beverages with a press of a button. Okay, wonderful. And so what is Nestle Professional featuring for both hot and cold beverages here at the show today? Tell me about the various brands and the unique features of each brand. What do you love about it? So I think the first thing that we are featuring this year is we gave them a concept that is called professional coffee solutions to our Nescafe winning coffee solution that is espresso based. You can have that espresso latte cappuccino with a press of a bottom, not only hot, but hot and cold. And I will share with you what cold is so important. And then we pair that with America's number one creamer that is Coffee Mate. Everyone wants to have their coffee their own way, and we can deliver that through Coffee Mate. So I can make Dora's coffee that in the morning could be French vanilla, in the afternoon could be salted chocolate caramel. Wow, that sounds delicious. I mean, I, I think I'm ready for either of those right now. So could you tell me about um, the creamer category? I know you have a new product that came out. What are the latest trends there? Yes, when we think about the creamers category, the category is changing. And the reason why it's changing is younger consumers are adding 
three times more creamer to the cup than uh, than ever before. So we expect the creamers category to grow over 10 times more in the next 10 years. So that is why it's an exciting category. It's all about flavors. It's all about seasonals. But the one thing that is really driving the growth is plant-based creamers. So if you don't have a plant-based creamer in your menu, that is something that you should add on because consumers are looking for those plant-based uh, creamer options. Right, right. And so another question, what were the most important targets that you wanted to hit as you were conceptualizing, developing and creating this particular product? So we are really going against that younger consumer, the younger demographic, because you are changing the category. The expectations for coffee for them are different now. They are looking for, actually, if you're less than 30 years old, you're drinking more cold coffee than actually hot coffee. And that is changing the category. And they don't only want that. It's not only about cold coffee. They want to have that cold coffee that it's cream, that it's flavor, and it has some sugar in it. And that is what we really can deliver with our Coffee Made creamers. Great. I'm so excited to try the plant-based coffee creamers. Can can we fire this thing up? <laughs> um, so here we are presenting the Nescafe Ultimate Barista 50. Uh, we call it that way because you can have your traditional drip coffee for your more seasoned uh, consumers. But we can also deliver espresso-based beverages with a press of a bottom that are made just for you. So if I look here, um, we will go to the ice category because that's what is trending. And you told me that you are lactose intolerant. So actually, I am featuring right now for you our latest innovation that is our oat latte. So here, as you can see, it's brewing for you our amazing hot latte um, that is just made with oat, uh, with oat uh, plant-based uh, milk. Wow. And while this is while this is brewing here, I just want to ask a final question. What are some of the top trends restaurants and food service companies need to watch out for when it comes to the coffee category? I think when it comes to coffee is cold is a new hot. So if you really don't have cold coffee in your operations, you are missing out a huge opportunity. I think that that is something that you can deliver. And it's not only your traditional iced coffee. We are talking about cold brew. We are talking about nitro. And especially those iced um, espresso-based beverages, those are the ones who are really driving the growth for the category. So cold is the new hot. You need to have um, some of those cold beverages. And the second piece is we continue to see large growth in espresso-based beverages in the category. So espresso is something that in the U.S. maybe 10 years ago, few places, if you were an Italian restaurant, you had it. Um, not everyone. Now you expect to have a latte and a cappuccino everywhere. So if you don't still have it on your menu, contact us because we can help you. Um, it's really a need for your new consumers. Um, if you're younger, if you're older, everyone is looking for those experiences. And the key is you want to personalize them. And that is where really our coffee mate comes to play to make sure that you're personalizing those coffees. So you make it your own. Wow, Dora, thank you so much. That was great information. Thank you so much for sharing that. I can't wait to try this iced coffee because we have a commercial break coming up real quick. But I do want to try it. And I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Okay, look out Starbucks because Nescafe is going to bump you right out of that, that spot. You, you've got a serious contender here. I am going to finish sipping on this lovely coffee. Finish this because it is so good. I'm not going to put it down until it's done. Um, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, you will find me in the kitchen with the one and only Chef Matt Jordan. And we will be working on some raviolis and some uh, chili con carne without beans. But He's the professional on that. I'll let him give that to you in just a little bit. Stay tuned.
back. As I promised, I am in the kitchen with Matt Jordan, and we are ready to start cooking. So, Matt, tell us what you're going to dish up today. Yes, my friend, we are making Chef Mate Chili Bolognese, a speed scratch recipe that tastes like that authentic Italian recipe. Well, I mean, I'll be the judge of that. So, <laughs> Well, we're going to taste it, so I can't wait for you to judge it, my friend. Okay, so we're going to get started with this. So what is it that you love about using this product from a chef's perspective? Yeah, so, you know, I'm fine dining trained, but today's operational realities are labor is really tough and you need consistency in the kitchen that is going to keep customers coming back craving the product. Our chef made chili is cooked before canning. So we are able to put really super high quality ingredients into the can before the retort process, which means you're going to have this consistent, delicious, craveable product every single time and make it really easy for the back of house. Oh, great. So it's easy to use like that. So we've got some garlic and onions. Are they shallots? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's okay. Shallots, my friend. Uh, but onions work great too. So I just have like a really super duper hot pan here, non, uh, a stainless steel skillet. I'm just going to toast my aromatics. And you'll see I'm taking it off the heat because we got that ripper hot. A little bit of pepper. You like that lean so I could take it, you know, still talking to the mic? Doing great. Thank We're going to be doing the cha-cha for a few more minutes over here. A little bit of cha-cha yeah, action, yes. Cha-cha slide. Uh, <laughs> so a little bit of uh, salt and pepper in there. Then, my friend, we're going to take our uh, chef mate chili. I'm doing it without beans. You can absolutely do it with beans. That way you can have more of like a, a southwestern ragu. Um, but I'm just trying to keep this pretty uh, ubiquitous. We're going to start to flip that up. We're going to take our cream. We're gonna add this in, let that simmer and reduce. And then with any great ragu recipe, we have some uh, Pecorino Romano. We're gonna grate that in. So while this is simmering, Brittany, we're gonna make some fresh ravioli. Yes, speak in my language, Matt. All right, my friend. So next, through the magic of uh, Nestle Professional TV, we've got, <laughs> we've got some fresh pasta dough. Uh, that I went ahead and made ahead. You know, operators can absolutely use their IQF pasta um, or, you know, blanch your own in the back of the house. And I have a, uh, you know, pasta maker, a pasta roller right here, but uh, not required for the delicious uh, flavor of the recipe. What's really the star is the uh, chef made chili sauce. So I'm going to roll this sucker out. We're going to start on size zero. We're just uh, going to hit it with some flour. This is like the splash zone, by the way, of flour. I saw Brittany, I saw Brittany back up, you know. <laughs> I'm in the zone. That's what happens when you're in the kitchen, my friend. That's why we got the aprons on. I was not offered an apron. Wait a minute. Who was in charge of apron distribution today? We got we to gotta hook you up with one. I think I got an extra in back. So I'm just going gonna, gonna, gonna to roll this out to about like a size uh, six or seven thickness. You want it just about the uh, thinness where you could see a newspaper if you uh, put it down. Okay. I'm taking notes. And then when you're handling pasta, you'll notice I'm using the back of my hand, my friend. And uh, we don't really want to puncture any parts. You like this? Look at this, you know, choreography. I'm like standing in the mic, rolling out pasta. This is good. We got this. We're in sync. We got it. <laughs> so, okay. We're talking about pasta, but what are some of the attributes of Chef Mate that really aid a kitchen from a food service angle? Can, can you multitask for me? You got it, my friend. You know, again, um, it's the consistency and it's our proprietary Flash 18 process, the cook before canning. We're able to, you know, like in our cheese sauces, for example, or quesos, we're able to put more dairy and more cheese into the product. And because, you know, our efficiency with cans, it makes it extremely affordable for the operator to have this super high quality product that's not going to crush their P&L. It's craveable. So guests are going to keep coming back. We're maximizing profit for the operator. It's a win, 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 win for everybody because it's such a darn good product uh, that is consistent. 
Great. You know, people love consistency. They like to know what to expect, but you add that little little bit of flavor and flair in there and it makes it into a whole new experience. So that's that's great. Exactly, my friend. All right, moving along. We got some uh, ricotta in here, some salt, pepper, oregano, lemon zest. Any great, you know, Italian recipe needs lemon zest. So I'm just going to uh, pipe this in. And I know, wow. I know we're going to be going to a uh, commercial break here in a second, but I'm going to roll these up. We'll blanch them in the water. And then when we come back, we'll toss them in the sauce. And then you can finally judge, you know, this chef mate Italian style bolognese. Okay. Okay. Well, I have another question for you. So we're just going to keep on rolling here. Uh, what are some flavor trends that you're seeing out there in restaurants and kitchens that are really resonating with diners and that diners seem to want more of? Yes. Okay. I'm really glad you asked this. So I meet with a lot of different customers across national accounts, regional chains, college and university, C-store, uh, distributor, you name it. Flavor trends, what's really important is skew rationalization and doing your core really well. Things like how we sell mac and cheese, queso, sauces, and then what the operator needs to do is a, is a LTO strategy, a limited time offer, where they take a core menu item, they bring in one new ingredient, they market that for two months and draw in new customers and they do it really well. That's really what um, I feel operators need to go back to in the industry today. Focus on the core and make the core unique through a rotating LTO strategy. Great. I am just so mesmerized by this pasta making process right now. <laughs> um, so question for you, again, while we're doing pasta, I have a question about the chef mate. What, what ingredients are in the chili con carne without beans? Yeah, so beef, uh, tomato paste, it gets uh, uh, cooked before canning. So there's like all these beautiful, rich spices in there. It's got that tang, a little bit of garlic note. It's just fantastic. So I'm making today, Brittany, annulotti, and this is some uh, delicate uh, egg yolk pasta. So, you, you know, pasta to me is like an emotion. You got to feel the pasta, be one with the pasta, you know, Mr. Miyagi it. And you got to, you know, wax on, wax off. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, a million and one different shapes of uh, ravioli you can make. But today I'm doing annulotti uh, because it sounds nice. Uh, you can charge more for it. And it's one of the easiest ones to make, but people would never know because you just pipe the filling, roll that sucker up, cut it, and then, you know, dunk it in the water. And you heard it here, folks. Roll that sucker up and just dunk it into the water. <laughs> Put that on a quote. That's a t-shirt. You want to go into that business? We could sell those t-shirts. I think I just got a business proposition. Um, anyway, moving on. Back back to Nestle. Um so let us let us see uh, what what are you doing now? So we've got the annulotti forming. You just take your uh, index fingers and you press down. And I actually want to lift this up. And you got to make sure your board is nicely floured when you go to cut it. I'm going to go some on top. Yeah, you don't want any sort of sticking, and you know it makes it a little more difficult to, uh, and takes a little bit more finesse if you have a ton of egg yolk in there, but that's just going to create this like rich, dreamy, craveable pasta dough. And then what you do is you take the back of your knife, and you just want to flatten, e flatten each side, cut, what? and then you get these like beautiful like little annulotti. And I mean, they're like, I just love it. Wow, it's it great. Later. You still like look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I just did something amazing. And it's, you know, it's eggs, flour, and salt and water, you know. Some of the best things in life are the simple things. The simple pleasures, you know, a nice espresso. But, you know, I don't have any sort of like Italian heritage genetically, but I feel like there's a lot of Italian in my soul. You know, you got to take a moment, have some pasta, have some espresso. That's what it's about. I mean, what more could you want? Well, as we are finishing up here in the kitchen with this wonderful looking dish, it smells great. Everybody's super engaged around here, around the booth. I'm going to send things over to Brian Choi, who has yet another guest with him. And, um, oh, my turn to taste. Well, I'm, I'm a little busy right now. So, Brian.
Brian, why don't you take it away? All right. Well, Brittany, that was amazing. Chef Matt Jordan bringing the goods. I'll definitely be checking over that station in a couple of minutes after my interview here with Katie Andrich. Um, so I'm here with Katie Andrich. She is the woman that basically put this entire booth together. She, I saw her carrying flowers from the parking lot into this booth. She's amazing. Katie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Katie, tell us a little bit about the brands and how important the brands, both the food and beverage brands are. Uh, at this show at, in NRA 2023. Yeah, so there's a really unique quality for each one individually, but the commonality I think is the simplification of each brand and then also the consistent taste quality that they deliver. Um, so individually, they all, all really give that flavorful menu solution um, as well as delivering the um, consistent taste quality and menu solution as well. Got it. Um, so tell us a little bit about this booth, like why you selected this booth in this hall. Um, so, you know, give yeah. us a little behind the scenes of like what what yeah. what you did to make this happen. So last year we were in South Hall. Um, this year we moved to Lakeside. Um, I thought this was more action packed and it's proving to be that way today and this week. So I think it's a good choice, um, but we wanted to showcase all of our innovations here. Okay. And then uh, what about the like the prep that it took to get all this all this stuff together? So give yeah. us a little bit of uh, the background here on, on what it took to make this yeah. happen. So first off, this is one of our biggest events of the year. So when I'm developing the booth concept, um, I look at what's going on in the industry, um, how that relates to our new innovations, and then I want it to connect with our strategic growth priorities. Um, so there's a lot that's involved in preparation. I have the blessing to work with both our food and beverage teams. Um, so there's a lot of connection with our brand managers, um, but it's really great to see it come together when it's fully done. Is this three months before the event, four months? Or oh. how, how much in advance do you prepare? Yeah, I mean, months. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I start looking at it even in the beginning of the year. So I try to look at what's going on. Um, I get inspiration from other things even outside of that. I'll be taking pictures while I'm even at my home, like looking at things. So always am inspired by things that are going on. Awesome. So what, what would you say are the main themes of the booth uh, this um, year compared to previous years? Yeah. So last year we didn't have as much of a focus on beverage, but this year I really wanted to showcase both food and beverage because we have so much to offer on both sides. Um, the customization and personalization, I think is really important and we wanted to highlight that um, especially just because now I think consumers are looking for those kinds of things they want customization they want personalization we want to show all that we have to offer um, as I mentioned before just um, with all of our products they're simple easy to use and they provide that same taste quality so wanted to highlight that as well awesome and one one thing I also noticed as well is that sustainability is a key theme. So just looking at some of the tables, we have the flowers. Yes. These are real plants. There are a couple of people that actually were feeling it, making sure that oh. they're real yesterday. So tell us a little a, a little bit about the emphasis on sustainability for this year. Yeah, I mean, as a company, we have that as a goal for all of our packaging at some point as well. I think it's in 2030. We want to make sure we're all um, sustainable. So. I want to make sure to always highlight that, think about it when I'm designing the booth space as well. Um, and Cassie, our sustainability lead, she always is helpful when it comes to those kinds of things. So I connect with her as well, getting her perspective um, when I'm planning the space too. Yeah it's, yeah, it's amazing to see just the the level of integration that you guys bring in the sustainability front. Yeah. Uh, a lot of companies just say, you know, just talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. But Nessie no. Professional, you guys actually walk the walk. So that's yep. very encouraging to see. Um, and uh, my last question before I turn it over to, to Brittany here is uh, what was the most difficult part of putting the show together, this booth together? Well, I so when I'm looking at a show, I kind of compare it all to uh, wedding planning is how I look at it. So it's a lot of detail, um, spreadsheets, you know, color coding, all of that, um, but collaboration with all our teams. Um, so. I don't know. The difficult part is just the preparation. It's the whole thing, but it's, I can't do it without my team. 
honestly, you have to have a good team that you can work with. And I'm really blessed that I have that both on the food and beverage side. Um, I love my Nestle professional team. So it's really rewarding when you see it all come together. It's not an easy thing to do. Right. Well, you know, it's it's a blessing you know, for the yeah. Food Institute to partner with Nestle Professional. This live stream is yeah. something that I think adds a new element, right? I was telling Fleur that yeah. you guys have a beautiful booth. Let's let's bring it alive with a live stream. And, you know, I'm super pleased that it's, you know, it's worked out so well. So Katie Andres, thank you so much for interviewing yeah, with me today. Uh, so Brittany, we're going to turn it back over to you. Uh, to, uh, to finish up uh, with your interview with uh, Chef Matt Jordan. Take it away, Brittany. And welcome to Act Two. There, there has been dancing and there will be singing. Matt, take it away. You know what? Dancing, singing, pasta. I mean, you can you can stop the novel right there. It's like we're in Italy. <laughs> it is. You know what? That's, you know, it's so cheesy, no pun intended, but that's what food is all about is the transportation. It's that emotion, and that's what keeps the customer coming back. Um, so, perfect timing. Enyoloti are just coming out of the water. You know they're ready when they float. We have this beautiful chef mate bolognese, which is uh, really great because it almost has like a little bit of a southwestern flair uh, with all that chili pepper in there. And because ravi is, uh, ravi's are so delicate. Instead of tossing them in the sauce, you really want to plate them with olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and then do your sauce right on top. And, and you know, my friend, I really, you know, from a price point stand standpoint, this is, you know, a product from a can, but you could truly put this on any sort of like fine dining, upscale, casual dining, fast casual menu and charge $24 for it. So really, again, super high profit margins um, for the operator. All right, a little bit of Pecorino Romano. You can absolutely go uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, but I like Pecorino. Um, it's got like a bright uh, flavor that pairs really nice with citrus. Wow, it smells amazing. Isn't that fantastic? You know, it's like a little bit of cream cheese, lemon zest, and some uh, pasta, and you're in, you're ready, my friend. A little bit of zim lemon zest on top. Uh, and then also a little bit of micro basil. And anytime you're like plating herbs, you want to do it from up top and then just like let them be, let them land where they land. And that's what's going to look best for the shot. Because remember, you know, you eat with your eyes first. A little more extra virgin olive oil. A little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. And are you kidding me right now? Look how good that looks. It looks good enough to eat. Is that a is that a New York City pasta plate? I think so. Um, I'm gonna grab a spoon for us to taste. And then as the uh, you know, I got to do some front of house work here too and serve you. It's a one stop shop here at Nestle you know today. What? You're the host. I'll be the chef. You know, we're we're making a good team. There's that 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 big honking bite for you, my friend. Wow. I see what you mean about the, the Southwest flavor. It's just really, really creative for something that comes out of a can. Um, that's great. That's excellent. Like good pie, but... Holy Toledo. That is so delicious. I'm sorry. Is that bad to say about your own work? I'll it's, give you a pass on this one. It tastes really good. It's like No, it's great. It is great. I mean, the basil, it's, it's really fresh. So, Matt Jordan, thank you. Uh, yeah, Matt Jordan, that is your name. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for taking us through this. And I'm going to send things over to Brian Choi, who has not one, but two special guests with him. And I'm going to finish eating some delicious pasta. Brian. All right. Well, that looks amazing. And, uh, I'm definitely going to be checking over that section in a few minutes. Uh, and just to wrap up the show, you know, we have two great guests. We have Cassie Hoover, who's a nutrition and sustainability lead at uh, Nestle Professional, and also Edwin, Edwina Hughes of the World Resources Institute. Thanks for coming on the program today. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, Cassie, tell us a little bit about, you know, what consumers, what they're, what they're looking for when it comes to their food, when it comes to, to sustainability. Tell us a little bit about the relationship between Nestle Professional and World Resources Institute. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Brian. 
So one of the trends that we're seeing in sustainability and what consumers are looking for is really around a concern in climate change and uh, an interest in understanding how their food choices can help them impact climate change. Right. And that's really the foundation of the partnership between WRI and Nestle Professional. Um, the tension that consumers experience, though, is that they don't always know what the dishes are that they could eat that might have a lower impact on the climate. So what we've done with Nestle Professional is really brought together our chef expertise in creating great plant-based dishes with our Sweet Earth brand and the opportunity to badge those dishes as lower carbon, climate-friendly dishes using the World Resources Institute's uh, Cool Food Meal Badge. Right. So Edwina, tell us a little bit about the, the, the labeling and a little bit about the World Resources Institute. Sure, yeah. So the World Ins Resources Institute is an environmental organization. So we work in lots of different areas. Food is one of those things. Uh, we also work on climate and oceans and forestry as well. So the Cool Food Program is all about organizations who want to serve more sustainable food. And the partnership with Nestle Professional is all about uh, creating those low carbon meals to make it really easy for consumers to identify and pick this better uh, choice. Um, I think as Cassie said, there is a little bit of tension in that people don't know what to do. The other thing is that people don't actually know how significant the emissions from food are. So they account for 25% of total greenhouse gas emissions globally. So once that fact is kind of more out there, I think we'll, we'll see more people recognizing this opportunity to select these meals that are better for the climate. Awesome. Well, one of the, one of the brands, the Sweet Earth brand, Cassie, that you mentioned, um, so why was that particular brand the one that you, you guys chose to partner with the World Resources Institute? Tell us a little bit about the evolution of that relationship with it. Yeah, so for us, so Sweet Earth is a brand of uh, plant-based meats, right? So we've got a chicken, we have burger, grounds, things that can really easily go into familiar dishes that consumers love, right? Because sustainability isn't like an ore, they're not willing to leave taste. They really need that great taste and texture of a great tasting dish. And then sustainability kind of comes on top of it. And so Sweet Earth, as our lead brand from a plant-based perspective, is just a really natural fit with creating those delicious climate-friendly meals. Awesome. Um, and if we know, one of the questions that I have for you is like, um, the cool food brands, um, the, the labeling, I, I, I love how it's the connection between the sustainability and also nutrition. That's the first time I, I've seen a program that has those two components together. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about kind of the, the thought process behind those two elements and why it's important for, for consumers. Yeah, well, I think, you know, when people want to eat more climate friendly and more planet friendly, they also want to eat in a way that's better for themselves. You know, I don't think people want um, a, an eco label that actually isn't about health as well. And we, we recognize that. So when we were creating the cool food meal label, we were driven by climate, but we were also thinking about nutrition. So in terms of the, the label and what it does, what we've done is we've identified a threshold for carbon uh, that we see as aligned with a sustainable food future. So that gives us our kind of guide for the emissions associated with meals that we eat from a climate point of view. Uh, but we've also used nutritional guardrails, a uh, Nutri-Score, which is this uh, assessment of a meal that gives you points, positive points for good attributes and negative points for sugar, salt and fat. You tot it up and then you get your score. And so what we said is that if a meal um, is lower than the climate threshold, but also is an A, B or C on this Nutri-Score um, assessment, that it can be then labeled as a cool food meal. So yeah, th that's the, the process that we go through. Well, you know, I, I'm certainly curious as to how um, how you actually measure the carbon footprint of uh, of a product. So can you can you delve a little bit more into that process? And I can. Yeah, so I, I don't want to overwhelm people yeah. with technical stuff, but yeah. you know, um, I think a lot of people are probably familiar with life cycle analysis. So this idea of from farm to fork, you can look at the emissions that are associated with food, and what the World Resources Institute has identified is that different foods have different impacts. So we know that there are groups of foods that have a, a very high carbon uh, emission associated with them, and we have and we have foods that are much lower, and plants have a much lower uh, climate. Um, impact associated with them. So we use that insight in order to really figure out 
what the climate impact is of food. So that life cycle analysis gives us from farm to fork emissions. We add something else on, which is where it gets a little bit technical, <laughs> where we look at um, carbon opportunity costs. So I think people understand opportunity costs. Right. You, you choose one thing and you, you give up on another thing. So we think about the way land is used. And we know that if land is in uh, agricultural use, it could have been in some other use. And the other use is often the thing that would be much more climate friendly if it was a forest or if it wasn't being used for pasture. Right. So we add those two things together and then we get the climate footprint of the food and that gives us our threshold. Was that okay? That, that was a bit great. Technical? That, that, that okay. was excellent. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that we were looking for when it came to potentially badging meals was this credibility and a thoughtful partner that is looking at the science and is thinking about it because this is really an emerging space being able to label the carbon, a low carbon dish on menu. And so as Edwina is describing it, it can be a bit complicated if you try to follow it, but the methodology is published on your website. And so that, that was something that's really important to us as Nestle Professional, as right. we were thinking about offering a solution to operators in this space. Yeah, I find it, I, I find it fascinating because a lot of companies, they, they talk the talk, but they don't really walk the walk when it comes to, to, to sustainability. And one of the things I noticed with Nestle Professional you guys really integrate sustainability and nutrition in a way that you know many other companies. Uh, I don't. I don't really see that. So, talk to us a little bit about the business decision. You know, as it relates to you know the Sweet Earth brand and just a re like how consumers are recept. You know, receiving that um, as the messaging and you know what it, what that means for sales for for Nestle Professional. Yeah, I mean it's certainly an emerging space, and we're seeing younger consumers tend to be so the millennials and your Gen Zs are the ones that are. Um, they've been hearing about this for a longer portion of their life, yeah? Right. They're early in their lives, they're setting their habits, especially those Gen Zs that are at colleges and universities, for example. And so they're really receptive to brands helping them achieve this, right? Be it Sweeter or maybe a food service operator, they're looking for partners that are credible that can sort of help them with these problems that they have. And so we've seen really great reception from the Sweeter perspective. Awesome. So, and if we a little bit about the number of brands that you, that World Resource Institute currently works with, you know, sweet earth, just a, just some ballpark figures there. Yeah, of course. So uh, the Cool Food Movement is a collaboration of over sixty organizations, right. and the majority of those organizations are food services. So they're serving food. So Panera is a partner. Our mark is a partner, uh, ISS, so a number of others. But actually, Nestle Professional is our only food manufacturer partner. So in this collaboration, it's quite unique. We are creating Sweet Earth-inspired cool food meals, so a kind of off-the-shelf solution for restaurants that want to serve um, an alternative protein, so plant-based protein, but also want to feel assurance that the meal they serve is a low-carbon meal. Right. Um, so tell us, in terms of the mission of the World Resources Institute, you know, there's some associations that they, they want to target a flexitarian uh, sort of consumer. Others, they want to get rid of all meat, you know, altogether. So tell us a little bit about the mission, you know, what, what the focus is in terms of the flexitarian consumer or in particular getting rid of sort of like animal meat altogether. Absolutely. So, you know, from our point of view, we know about 96% of the population like eating meat. That's not going to change anytime soon. So we know people enjoy eating meat. So we don't necessarily um, anticipate or even are seeking a kind of situation where everyone would be vegan. And it's not necessary, you know. So to create a sustainable food future, uh, U.S. consumers need to eat a burger less a week, you know. So it's not a huge leap. And what we want to see and we're hoping to encourage people to do is those people who love eating meat to try something else, you know. And as Cassie said, that's where flavor and delicious food come in. If it isn't appealing, people aren't going to choose it. So it needs to be really appealing, needs to look good, taste good, sound fun. And then, you know, it just happens to be plant-based. So that's the kind of perfect combo. Right. And Cassie, you know, as the representative of the Sweet Earth, like, uh, what have you seen in terms of consumer behavior? Are they eating more kind of plant-based products um, from where you sit? Uh, or, you know, just tell us a little bit about kind of just the, the consumer change in, in what you're seeing with Sweet Earth. Yeah, I, consumers are definitely eating more plant-based. And as we work with our operator partners to offer more, right, they're really looking for a wide range of options, right, from that familiar dish where you just swap in something like a stir fry to those more globally inspired um, flavors. Consumers are definitely seeking more of those plant-based options. Awesome. Well, uh, my last question before we close out the show is for both of you all, 
uh, what's the one product or you know food or beverage or you know technology that really kind of caught your eye over the past couple of days? Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, so I'm really um, amazed by um, the range of options um, in the world of plant-based today, right? So obviously I'm here representing Sweet Earth, but I'm really excited by all of the um, exploration and the future of where this can go, right? We're going to need a lot of solutions for a more sustainable future. And I think it's really great to see um, all of the innovation that's happening in this space. All right. And Amina. Well, can I steal Cassie's? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm kind of looking around here and I'm seeing lots of really inspirational products and opportunities. And it really inspires me to know that people are thinking about this in a different way. You know, the conversation around plant-based five years ago was such a different conversation. I feel like it's really moved on and, and all of the different uh, organizations represented here are you know, showing that, that actually this is a thriving area. People are interested and keen. And so choice is a really good thing as well. Awesome. What a great program, a great uh, interview. Uh, thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Edwina, uh, for coming uh, on this program. So we're going to turn it over back to, to Brittany Bohr, uh, who's going to close out the program. Uh, Brittany, take it away. Thanks, Brian. So, I mean, that's a wrap for day two of the Nestle Professional live stream here at the National Restaurant Association Show 2023 in Chicago, Illinois. I have been your host, Brittany Bohr from the Food Institute, and you can watch the replay of this show for day one and day two on our website at the food Institute doc at food www.foodinstitute.com. There we go. We have tons of other resources on our website, like webinars, podcasts. We have video interviews, live segments. We do a weekly newscast and you can even get a daily newsletter sent right to your inbox with the latest information, data, trends, and insights into the food industry. So again, Thank you so much. Uh, I want to extend a special thanks to Nestle Professional for partnering with us here at the Food Institute to put this live stream together for all of you. And uh, I hope we um, we did. A, well, I hope everyone on the live stream learned a thing or two. You know, I we have the best audience on the Web. So truly, thank you guys for tuning in and just being faithful, leaving your comments. And we look forward to doing um many more shows in the future. So it's truly been a lot of fun these past two days and I hope you enjoyed the show and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thanks so much for watching.